Welcome, today we're going to be looking at the Triumph Tiger rear brake pad uh, cleaning and replacement. This is a really great project as your first mechanical project. I know a lot of people consider chain maintenance as a mechanical project, but it isn't. Uh, rear brake pad is a lot easier and better if anything goes wrong than your front brake pads. Let's get started with uh, everything you need. You're obviously going to need some tools. Most importantly, you're going to need some sort of torque wrench. Uh, you really do need a torque wrench. Reason being is that you're going to have to undo some very, let's say, essential bolts from your motorcycle. You're also going to need some copper compound. This is also called copper grease or copper slip to some people. You're going to need a toothbrush, not your own you know, a different one than the one that you use on a day-to-day -day basis. You're going to need one flat screwdriver, some brake and parts cleaner, also called brake cleaner. Uh, you do get this in a non-spray bottle, which is much cheaper. Uh, you're also going to need new pads. So these are new fancy SBS pads, as you can see, and used. Uh, you're going to need a rag or maybe some paper towels but really just get a rag you can buy like a roll of this relatively cheaply at the shop uh, yeah you're also gonna need a five allen key also sometimes called a hex key you're gonna need a 12 and a 14 you're also gonna need some soapy water for your toothbrush this is just part of the cleaning you want to start with a flat screwdriver to take the pinion cover off make sure that it's nice in there this came off easier because I obviously tightened it before but you should should have a little a little bit of resistance and then a pop that's what that looks like it's really just to cover the bolt that's in there then what you're going to do is that five hex bolts I was uh, I was talking about earlier also known as a five Allen key that just comes off right there So see, I put that in there. It should look reasonably good. If yours has got corrosion and whatnot, you'll kind of need to clean that. Mine's even still got a little bit of copper slip on it from last time, but we will put more copper slip on. And, uh, you kind of just move. The, you kind of give the caliper back and forth, and the rear patch should just slide out. See, these are really. You should be replacing them around about here if not maybe a little bit earlier but front pad is not going to move without taking out this bolt this bolt is a 12 also still looking pretty good with a bit of copper slip on it still now you should be able to move the whole caliper up a little bit and this pad should just be able to slide out like that and there's the other pad uh, as you can see from both of them, they are sort of approaching the wear limit. You could get a little bit more out of these, but you know, generally you're going to be replacing both. Next, we're going to give this a good cleaning. We're going to get this 14 millimeter off. At some point, you should be able to just hand. There we go. Also looking reasonably good. And there, your caliper should just pop right off. Now you want to get your bucket with your trusty toothbrush ready and soapy water and you are basically just going to take the caliper off a little bit. Where you're trying to clean is the caliper that's over here. You're trying to just clean around it. You're trying to get in there where the pin is. Before you start cleaning, you actually just want to press the rear brake pad a couple of times and you'll see this piston come out here. You see how that just is coming out? You don't want to do this too much. A couple of squeezes and then you want to clean. Now, once you've done that with some soapy water, you're going to get your brake cleaner out. You're going to give it a good shake. And uh, you generally can be pretty liberal with the stuff. That's your cleaning procedure done and dusted. If you look at your original two brake pads, this is how they go in. 
remember that your pinion is at the back so this is the one that's closest to you this is the one that's on the inside of the bark now if you look at your original two and you flip them around you'll see there are these there's a round mark over there which is where the piston was pushing against it and there are marks on this end on the edges there which is where the uh, the two the two claws on the other end were holding it in now you want to put copper slip in exactly those spots and just a little bit around on your new brake pads and here is this, that's not even the same brake pad <laughs> make sure that they're the same you got your old brake pad and your new brake pad and you just want to put copper slip in about the same spot so you're just gonna put a little dollop just with your hands you just want to rub it around in more or less the same circle Yeah, the pads, all the new, and it's going to be done these two edges. So you're basically just going to take your copper slip. You really don't need a lot. If you kind of look at that, it's really not a lot. You're kind of just getting it in the same spot and then on the other end. Now this is really just to uh, alleviate any half frequency vibrations because when you brake there's a lot of sort of very fine vibrations that are happening. And there we go, copper slip, probably more than you need but hey if you're doing this the first time, which we are, why not put more copper slip than we need considering we, we, we bought a whole, a whole tube. This copper slip you do get cheaper that comes in a tub. Now another place that you're going to need some copper slip is around the cylinder itself you're going to need a bit of copper slip it's easiest to do this with a little earbud you just kind of want to get it in there as much as you can now what you do with your earbud is you really just want to put a little bit of copper slip on the earbud itself and that will be much easier than using your finger to get into some of these places and you just want to kind of spread the copper slip now one more use for your old pad is take the one that had the piston against it once you, you know, you've put your copper compound on you want to put that sort of in place grab it with both hands and you want to sort of pull. It definitely does move, I promise you. You, know, you probably don't see this on video much, but uh, it definitely does go back. Once it's almost all the way in, then you know that you've, you've basically gone far enough. Next we're just going to put the slow line caliper, obviously copper compound on all of our bolts. This back one first, or sorry the front one first. I'm going to slide that in you're going to do it in by hand. I generally turn it in the opposite direction until I feel the thread, feel where the thread is and then you should just be able to by hand roll it in. I prefer to do mine mostly up by hand just so that I know that it's okay. And there we go, once that's in it should be solid. This should also feel relatively fine moving this back and forth. Now your first brake pad you're going to put in is the one that has the piston against it. This is the one that had this much copper grease on it. That's the one that's against you. You're going to slide it basically against the pad all the way in. There is a little spot in the back here. Let's try and get in on that. If you sort of look at that, you see that's where the front of the pad sits. So I'll lift this up and show you. If you lift up the caliper, that's where the little back piece slides into. And it's like a holder. You should be able to see this if you look. And basically, you know that it's in. That's what she said. Now, once you've got the front pad in, and your pinion all, do, all copper greased up, you can start putting your, just holding the brake pad in there grabbing the back side which is this side the only other brake pad you should have then you slide that in the back you want to kind of push this against just to give you some space 
And you want to slide that in the back and it should be a relatively tight fit. Just a lift up. There we go. Where your pinion sits should all sort of like line up. And if I can bring you closer here, friends, you can sort of see that in action. As your pinion sort of slides in, you'll be able to relatively easily just turn it in by hand. And once that's mostly in, you grab your last bolt, which of course, copper grease. Moving you guys around here a little bit. And that bolt just slides in there. And the same story. Turn in the opposite direction, lefty loosey until they all click, then you hear it, and then righty tighty. Also, by hand, it should just go in just beautifully right to the end, like both. You can confirm that this is still moving back and forth, but this should feel a lot tighter now. Once you've got everything in by hand, it's time for the torque wrench. To start with this 14 millimeter, 27 newton meters. 12 mil bolt is 22 nanometers. The pin itself is 18 nanometers, but you can get it in most of the way just by hand. And it should just go in very easily without any resistance. Pump the back brakes a couple times and make sure that it goes firm. You'll feel a little bit of copper grease on the end of a bed. You basically just want to put it in there. You know, if you're going to work on your own motorcycle, be nice to it. The cover cap, you really just want to screw in just by hand, just to get the threads going. And then take your screwdriver. You should torque spec this as well. I think it has a torque spec of like 8. But most torque wrenches don't go down to 8. So what I've seen from a lot of people is tighten it. So as you can see there, it's sort of just, it's just as it just starts to take and then you just want to give it a little bit more. So you just want to make sure that it's tight but not too tight, if that makes sense. Probably not, but you should be able to undo it relatively without too much struggling, but it shouldn't be loose. Do you know what I'm saying? And that, that's brakes. From one beginner to another beginner, I do hope that you try and replace your rear brake pads and give it a good cleaning. After you've done this, you definitely want to ride the bike, not super fast down the highway, but you just want to make sure that the rear pads work. Do keep in mind for about the first 100, 200 kilometers, they're definitely going to take time to bed in. Uh, there's already a little bit of a gap, but uh, you know, with time, with time and patience friends. An easy project to do, took me about a day, borrowed the torque, torque wrench from a friend of mine, who kind of services his own bike um, and if you have a friend like that ask them if you can if they can help but really something that you could easily easily do